1984, Apple ran a television commercial during the third quarter of the Super Bowl that has been described as one of the most memorable and successful American TV commercials of all time. It depicted a young, vibrant female carrying a sledgehammer being chased by a group of stormtroopers through a bleak, futuristic sci-fi setting where bald human drones in gray sat watching Big, Big Brother address them on a screen. She hurls a sledgehammer like a discus, smashing both the screen and the message. Now this ad was shown just once to launch the new Apple Macintosh computer. It was used as a metaphor to describe Apple's entry into an IBM-dominated marketplace. And the message was clear, save humanity from conformity. Now, I'm here today to talk about my emerging anxiety with technology and its impact on the connections with those around me. You see, the smart world that I've become a part of is taking me away from where I am. It's minimizing my sense of connectiveness. It's driving me into a soundbite way of expression and messaging. You know, I am so connected to everything that I'm beginning to, feel, I'm beginning to feel connected to nothing. I'm proud to be a part of the Portland Maker Movement. And for the last 10 years, my lighting and lifestyle brand, Schoolhouse Electric, has grown beyond my wildest dreams. The web and interior design blogs have provided the rocket fuel that have sustained our flight. About a year and a half ago, we moved into this 125,000 square foot brick factory building in Northwest Portland. The new space allowed our company to expand our product offering, and in doing so, we launched a new website and flagship retail store. But at the same time that technology was helping my company grow, I was becoming aware that my personal life, my personal life was becoming less and less authentic, which was manifesting itself and how I was communicating with people. So here I was, a 49-year-old business owner, a husband and father of three, on a, just a, a diet of texting and emailing and social media. My relationships were becoming brittle and thin, and I had to find a way back to my analog self and to gain some sense of connection that for too long had been lost. Now, around the same time that we were getting settled in the new building, I went on a quest to find a space I could call my own. A space that was far away from the design studio on the second floor. And with virtually two vacant floors to choose from, I set my sights on a small room on the quiet side of the building near the loading dock that decades before had been the shipping foreman's office. Now, relying on my abilities to create interesting environments, I set out to build the ultimate fort. <laughs> and I want to be clear about something. This is not a man cave. <laughs> there are no screens in this room. I mean, we're talking four by four brick walls on all sides, no Wi-Fi. You know, I think that subconsciously, I had reverted back to being a 10-year-old boy. I think that we can all relate to that need as a child to find that space that is our own, a space where we get to make the rules about who gets in, a place where we can let our imaginations run wild. My fort makes me feel that way. You know, I love that this is a place that I can think and reflect. I can have face-to-face -face conversations with people. There's no heat in this room. I can build fires and sit across the coffee from, table from somebody and look into the whites of their eyes.
You know, this has become my digital free zone. And it wasn't until probably about a year later that I reluctantly decided to let girls into my fort. <laughs> like most guys, I love old cars. And so I convinced my wife that what I really needed was a 1974 boxy sedan. And this is her, her name is Penny. She was named by my 10-year-old daughter, Greta. It's the ultimate analog car. Crank up windows, a fuzzy AM FM radio. Driving down the road in Penny, listening to NPR, or my favorite local jazz station, makes me feel free and untethered from the digital world. Now, this isn't the only car that I drive, but what I love about Penny is there's no Bluetooth. There's no navigation system. There's no Siri. It's just me and Penny. It's become another digital free zone where the phone stays off. If somebody needs to get a hold of me or I need to get a hold of somebody else, it's gonna have to wait until I get where I'm going. Now I know that building a fort and buying an old car are just part of the solution towards me finding awareness and balance, and that some may see this as superficial. But it's really helped me to step back and to see that the only way to become truly connected to others has to start with me feeling connected to myself. I'm a visual person and I loathe graphs and spreadsheets and profit and loss statements. And, but there's a graph that we had used at Schoolhouse that helped to give us a snapshot of where our company was, where our company is now, and where our company is going as it relates to surface and deep issues. I highly recommend this. It's called the surface and deep graph. I began to see that I could use this to look at my own life not a digitally edited version of myself, but a true depiction of my life frozen in time. Now, as you can see on the chalkboard behind me, deep issues can be described as love and family and friendship, playing catch with my son, reading a book to my daughter, meeting a friend for a meaningful conversation over coffee. Surface things are email, texting, the internet, video games, television, spending too much time on Pinterest. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Getting lost in Facebook, Instagram, the list goes on. You know, it's not that, it's not that, these, it's not that one is bad and the other one is good. It's about becoming aware of the balance between those two points. You know, it wasn't too many years ago, if you'd have asked me, how many close friends do you have? I would have said, very few, maybe three or four, and I'm talking close friends. But what I loved about that reality was, that, was the quality and the depth of those relationships. They held weight. There was history and context. Sure, they were messy at times, but they were real. This has changed due to my surface and digital connections because you know what? My conversations have now been replaced by texting. My emails are getting lost in translation. The graph was clear. If I was gonna escape this digital ecosystem that I'd become so immersed in, I was gonna to have to start to pursue those deeper things that for too long have been eluding me. You know, there's nothing easy about changing your life or shifting your perception around what it means to be a human being, a good father, a loving husband, or a good friend. But I feel like in taking a closer look at where I stand today, 
I'm beginning to have a chance. You know, a couple weeks ago, I'm having a Ben-Hur moment. <laughs> a Ben-Ha, sorry. <laughs> Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was driving my 11-year-old son, JP, to school, and he asked me, he said, what's your TED talk about, Dad? And I said, well, it's about finding my analog self in a digital world. And he said, well, what, is, what does that mean? <laughs> and I said, it's about trying to find balance between technology and being your dad, those important human things that are more important. And I reminded him of a day about three months ago where the two of us did nothing but chop and load and stack wood together all day. It was the most incredible day. There's nothing more analog than chopping wood with your 11-year-old son. You know, I went on to tell him how proud I was that what a great worker he was. It was such a meaningful experience. I, I told him, that's, I, want, I want more things like that in my life. Away from all the digital distractions. And he reminded me, he said, yeah, Dad, remember you, you asked me to go inside to check Google about different ways of stacking firewood? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that is the honest to God's truth. <laughs> you know, I'm not a psychologist or an expert. And I'm not, tell, I'm not here to tell anybody what they should or shouldn't do. But I guess I just want to remind myself that my life is not the sum of my digital experiences but rather a gift that can only be measured by my ability to have meaningful human connections, both with myself and those that I choose to walk through this life with. Thank you.